All right, well, it's time now for our business update with Charles Pellegrin. Projections for growth in 2023 had until now been quite morose, but the latest outlook from the IMF is showing a different picture. Charles, good morning. What can you tell us? Good morning, Aaron. Absolutely. The, uh, the International Monetary Fund uh, saying that global growth has been, quote, surprisingly resilient in its updated forecast for the whole uh, world economy, saying that most countries will avoid a recession this year in spite of rising inflation. A sharp contrast uh, with what uh, IMF Director Kristalina Gorgieva was saying at the turn of the year. Uh, she warned that a third of all countries could enter recession. Key factors here are the sudden decision to scrap the zero COVID policy in China and falling gas prices. So global growth is uh, projected to reach 3.2% uh, in 2023 compared to 1.9% the previous year. Uh, the U.S. and the EU area are avoiding recession in spite of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. Sub-Saharan Africa sees its growth steady at 3.8%. And the U.K., as you can see there, is the only leading economy that will shrink with a GDP figure of minus 0.6%. China, meanwhile, will see its economy grow to the tune of 5.2% compared to 3% last year as Beijing lifted all COVID restrictions affecting supply and demand. We can anticipate that once the economy fully reopens, we have less uh, supply chain disruptions that we have witnessed in 2022 when there were lockdowns and, and confinements. So we're going to get an expansion in production coming from that side. And also we're going to get an increase in domestic demand as Chinese households are going to be able to resume activities and start spending. Well, while growth uh, for sub-Saharan Africa is meant to continue climbing in 2023, uh, cost of living will continue to be an issue uh, for the population in Niger, for instance, where uh, popular anger has led the country's uh, main telecom operators to backtrack on a scheduled uh, sometimes 40 percent price increase for phone and Internet packages. Our correspondent in Niamey, Harold Girard, sent us this report. Telephone operators in Niger doubled the prices of Internet packages for three days in January, a move backed by the sector regulator in order to increase the amount of cell phone and data coverage in the country. But a brutal customer backlash forced them to reverse their decision. Everything's done by phone. Often business is on the other side of the border, so you have to send WhatsApp messages. You say the kind of goods you want and you send money also by internet. So if the phone operators increase their prices, we'll be forced to increase the price of our goods. Higher telecom prices were the last straw. Last year, the increase in the price of foodstuffs and diesel had already angered the inhabitants of Niamey. The capital's traders decided to go on strike last week. The main shopping areas were closed to force the authorities to reduce taxes on companies and reduce the burden of inflation. Many traders have left the country in recent years because of taxes. The government should try to repatriate them, to talk with them, to try and find a solution together. The country could be appealing to get them back. It's better that they are here than elsewhere. Most Nigerians live on less than two euros a day. The minimum wage is just over 30,000 CFA francs, or about 45 euros. In Niamey, it would be difficult for you to find a place to live, even a single room, for less than 40,000 francs. So you will see a worker who earns 30,000 francs can't even afford to live on a salary. Despite strong economic growth predicted in 2023, Niger's cost of living is expected to rise further. IMF also predicts inflation of at least 3% this year. In Washington, moving closer and closer to a complete ban of U.S. tech exports to Huawei. Reports saying the Biden administration has notified companies it will no longer grant licenses to groups looking to sell tech to the Chinese giant. The Trump administration has uh, had placed Huawei on a blacklist in 2019, forcing companies to seek out authorization before dealing with them. The U.S. accuses Huawei of helping Beijing's espionage efforts, something that Huawei denies. China's uh, foreign ministry reacted to the reports this Tuesday, saying it was seriously concerned. Let's take a look at the markets now in Europe. The main indices opened lower as investors are waiting to hear the conclusions of the Federal Reserve's policy meeting. A 0.25% rate increase is expected. Investors will also be keeping an eye on Euro GDP figures for the last quarter of 2022 released this uh, Tuesday. The figures for France 
have been released already. GDP fell 0.1% in that time, and over the whole of 2022, rose 2.6%, and inflation uh, increased to 7% for the month of January. The Federal Reserve also weighing on the minds of investors in Asia, with shares trading lower there as well. In spite of manufacturing data out of China showing growth again after four months of contraction, you can see the Shanghai Composite uh, down almost a half a percent. And this Tuesday will mark the final send-off of one of the most iconic passenger planes in history. The Boeing 747, the jumbo jet, will continue to fly for uh, decades to come, but the U.S. manufacturer Boeing will no longer produce it. The final delivery of a 747 is scheduled for this Tuesday in Washington State. It'll be a cargo plane destined for U.S. Uh, freight company Atlas Air. The 747, with its uh, size, its uh, flying range and efficacy, uh, was what made international travel accessible for middle-income families in the late 20th century. All in all, uh, Aaron Boeing built 1,574 uh, 747s since uh, 1969 is when it first flew. I'm disappointed I never got a chance to, to ride on one. Charles Feligon Business, thank you very much.